Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says a vote on extending cash for clunkers will happen this week. We were hearing that it could possibly happen tomorrow, but will automakers and the dealers be able to keep up with this unbelievable demand if the program gets more money? Chris, it would just be another two billion. Well, yeah, well, I mean, we saw what happened in that first week, really going back to the beginning of July. The thing about it is the answer to your question is no. I mean, you look at Toyota, just for example, they're at right now about 30 days supply, and on the Prius, just at about 13 days supply, when they usually want to be at about 60 days supply for each model. So they're going to have to ramp up production, but that's what you want. That accelerates that dollar through the process, ramping up production from all, all, all the big three and the foreigners. Shivani. How times have changed when you just say it's only $2 billion. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, true. Uh, well, you know, here, here's what I worry about a little bit, is that if we don't have enough of these cars on the lots, people may end up not buying by putting their purchases on hold because there aren't cars for them to buy. Maybe they'll save the money, maybe they'll use it for different purposes because the uneasiness, if we have, a, you know, if we have some bad economic data, if we have, a, you know, some additional ripple effects, which many people think we're going to have in the commercial real estate industry and other areas, they might not end up buying at all, and all of this goes to kind of waste. Peter Schiff. Well, look, the whole plan is, is, is an example of the government making the economy worse. The economy is going to suffer as a result of class for cash for clunkers. It is hurting the economy. Think about what we're doing. People are buying cars. No, huh? think about what we're doing. We're taking cars that work, that we already own, right, that people were driving, and where there's no debt attached, there's no car payment, people own these cars. We are destroying them. We are pouring acid on the batteries. We are crushing them. We are taking a working asset and destroying it. Then the government is going into debt to send people money so that they can take on more debt to buy a car that they didn't need and they couldn't afford. And the result of this whole disaster is that we're deeper in debt than we were before. That is not the way to get out of this mess. We should not be buying new cars. We need to drive the clunkers that we have. What we need to do is get back to work. We need to make stuff. We need to save our money. We need to produce because that's the way you get out of a hole. You don't dig yourself deeper. We are not a manufacturing society anymore. That well, is we true. have to be. We can't we not be. We should be, but we're not. But we're going to be again. Uh, okay. Otherwise, we're going to be a poor society. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath, but I mean, I would love to see that too. Closing bell ringing in 10 minutes. We will be right back. We have the Dow Jones Industrials down 46 points. Stay tuned. We are in the home stretch. Just minutes from the close here. The big story stock shares of Papa John's. Yum. International heating up. I know. No, not yum. Papa John's. Yum is a different company. The pizza restaurant chain saying it plans to scale back some financial support offered to franchisees to help them through the recession, potentially providing a boost to earnings. We have Molina Healthcare shares in the red after the company reported weaker than expected second quarter earnings per share. The managed healthcare company saying it was challenged by increasing medical costs in the quarter, lowering its 2009 earnings per share guidance, stock taking a 10% hit. And U.S. Airways shares are flying higher. The company saying its planes hit record capacity use again in July, despite a continued slump in demand. This is the fourth straight month and the eighth time since last August that the company has posted record monthly load factors. So the stock is up eight and two quarter, three quarters percent. Our thanks to Peter Schiff of Europe Pacific Capital, and you've had some big stock winners here, most of them from out of this country. Which country do you think emerges from this recession most strongly? Well, I think Asia is going to be the most dynamic. Anything tied into China, the stocks in Hong Kong and, so, and, and Singapore, stocks in mainland China are going to be strong. And I still like all the resource stocks that got beaten up uh, last year. All the stocks that got beaten up in 2008, those are the leaders now in 2009. They're coming back. And I think what we're seeing now is decoupling. Uh, this is not a U.S. recovery. The U.S. economy is going to be in a depression for years to come. But ultimately, our foreign lenders, our suppliers, they, they, the, the financial crisis is abating abroad, and real economic growth will return overseas. Listen, he, he, he feels strongly about this. He's made money in other countries. Peter Schiff of Europe Pacific Capital, great to see you. We are five minutes from the close, so let's count down our seven late movers with Fox Business's Tracy Burns.